We'll now cover some basic guidelines for operating a Type 3 Group A scissor lift. For this training, a Genie GS2632. First, you'll do a site inspection. In this case, it's inside an IUPAT IFTI facility. There's plenty of equipment that needs to be moved out of the way, so you'll start with that. You also need to check the concrete floor surface to make sure it's free of significant cracks and openings that could cause the scissor lift to tip over. There's a large metal job box that needs to be moved out of the way. Fortunately, it's on wheels. You need to make sure that all of your work areas are clear of obstructions and equipment, not just where you start to work. Also check for any gas, water, and electric lines that might be inside the building. Make sure that the overhead area is clear. In this case, there's some ceiling lights and fans, so be mindful of those. When operating at height, you probably want to shut those off. And don't forget lockout and tagout requirements and other considerations. The first thing to check is that the operator's manual is present on the lift and confirm that it includes a checklist so that you can inspect the lift. All the manuals must be present in the storage container on the platform and must be used during your inspection of the scissor lift. The first thing you'll look for are the manufacturer's warning decals on the machine. Make sure they're legible, that the markings on the controls are visible, and that the weight lift capacity of the machine is displayed. Next, check the battery packs. And don't forget to always put gloves on before you touch anything inside the engine compartment. The battery pack should be filled with water. If you need to add some, it should be distilled water. Now, check the electrical connections and the wiring. Look for corrosion, leaks, and chafe wires. Any battery maintenance should be done in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. That includes using specific PPE as recommended by the manufacturer. The next thing to do is check the lines for hydraulic leaks. Check for proper oil level and make sure the machine is filled with hydraulic fluid, which has to be checked against the fill mark when the lift is all the way on the ground. That forces the hydraulic fluid to flow back into the reservoir. Inspect the lock pins in the machine. Make sure that they're all there and in place and that there are no cracks. Turn the machine on with the key. When you turn it to the right, you can operate it from the lower controls. Turning the key back to center shuts off the machine. Turning the key to the left allows you to operate the lift from the upper controls. Make sure that the machine goes up and down from the lower controls. Make sure that the emergency lowering control works. This can lower the lift without any power. Also, check that the emergency brake release works. This will allow you to move the machine without power. You can freewheel it. Next, switch the lower controls to the upper controls. Now the machine will only work from the upper controls on the work platform. Make sure that the gate only swings in and that the latch works. Check that all the lock pins are in place on the basket and are properly secured. Secure your lanyard harness latch to the tie-off point on the platform. Test each control to make sure they function before you begin working. and test every maneuvering operation that can be performed from the upper control box. Make sure to put the manuals back in the protective envelope so they don't get wet and return them to the storage box on the operator's platform. Maintenance and repair manuals for the equipment may also be found in the operator's manual storage box on the platform. Now you're ready to get to work. You've cleared the ground surface of the area where you'll move the machine, but continue to look all around as you move the lift into place. That means looking up, down, and all around. Verify every time you elevate the lift that there's nothing overhead you could hit.
once you get into position, it's good practice to hit the stop button and shut the machine off. That way the controls can't be accidentally activated while you're working. Extend the platform to reach the desired location and to elevate over objects or obstructions that are in the way. The platform locks in three different places. To move the scissor lift, you need to step on the foot pedal. When you turn the machine on, the default setting is the drive mode. You'll have to switch the controls to raise or lower the platform. As you lower the machine, visually check the area again. Here, you can see the pothole guards under the machine. They come out every time the lift goes up to help stabilize the working platform. When they're elevated, most scissor lifts can't be driven at full speed. Some models can't be driven at all after the lift has been elevated. Make small inputs on the steering controls to maneuver the lift where you want to go. The controls are pretty straightforward. Typically, you push the joystick forward and you go forward. You pull the joystick backwards and you go backwards. Use the thumb rocker switch to turn the wheels. Pushing the button to the left turns the wheels to the left. Pushing the button to the right turns the wheels to the right. That's how the controls for this particular lift operate, but make sure you understand the control functions for any machine you use. If you have to put your hands in the scissor area of the lift, for example, to inspect the hydraulic lines and pistons or look for debris on the lower pan, set the safety arm and then lower the machine down onto the arm. This will prevent the lift from accidentally dropping. This video provides basic operator training on the Genie GS2632 scissor lift. Other scissor lifts may have different or additional operator requirements, equipment inspection procedures, a different location of operator controls, and different maintenance requirements. That means that other scissor lift training may be different from the training provided here on the Genie GS2632 scissor lift. But this lift is a commonly used model, and the safety tips we've given you here can apply to any model of scissor lift. Working at height can be dangerous, so the lift must always be operated within its allowable design specifications. Be aware of allowable slope, wind and weather conditions, and weight limits. As always, operate the equipment safely. Follow the manufacturer's recommendations at all times when operating a scissor lift. Use the lift inspection checklist before you start working and follow the manufacturer's maintenance instructions for all repairs and maintenance on the lift. Do not exceed the safe load lift limit. Only use the equipment as it was intended to be used on flat, smooth ground surfaces. And don't work during inclement or excessively windy weather. We can't stress this enough. If you follow the manufacturer's recommendations from the first day you operate these types of aerial lifts until the day you retire, it will help to ensure that you go home every day the same way you came to work. Thanks for watching and be careful out there.